Do you want to maximize your success with NCUA? Join Mark Trichel as he shares with you the insider's view on passing your exam with Flying Colors. The With Flying Colors podcast is sponsored by Credit Union Exam Solutions by Mark Trichel. If you would like to work directly with the Credit Union Exam Solutions team and receive support to optimize your results with NCUA so you save time and money, visit us at marktrichel.com to find out more. Hey everyone, this is Mark Treichel with another episode of With Flying Colors. It is February 26th. This is pre-recorded. February 26th is the first day of CUNA GAC Sunday. And I've had it suggested to me that I take my two podcasts which discuss NCUA's six priorities and break them into more snackable content, if you will, which would be one topic per podcast. And as a first step, I'm taking the recording I have of each of those topics, breaking it into a shorter podcast. And I thought, what better way to do that than during the week of GAC, which lasts five days, Sunday to Thursday. So you'll get one podcast each day, starting with Sunday. And this is interest rate risk. The other voices you will hear are Steve Farr and Todd Miller, formerly of NCUA, who assist me on the consulting I do for credit unions. Lastly, I'm skipping GAC this year. Why? Because my daughter and her husband are in town. I don't get enough quality time with them because they're super busy and they're coming to visit us in Florida. So you won't see me at GAC. You'll just have to listen here on With Flying Colors. That's it. Here we go. Interest rate risk with a little bit of a discussion of the economy as a precursor to the interest rate risk discussion. And maybe before we jump into the specific priorities that NCUA has outlined, we could speak a little bit to what's going on economically and what that means a little bit for credit unions and what we're seeing. Todd, with your background in capital markets and in some of the discussions you and I have had recently with credit unions, maybe it would be good if you could summarize your take on what's happening right now economically. Sure, Mark. And we went into great detail on this on some of our liquidity podcasts. The world is a very interesting place right now. We went through covid In 2020, 2021, we had an unprecedented amount of government assistance, which led to a lot of deposit inflows for credit unions. And then things changed. And now we've had an inverted yield curve for a year. In the last year, Fed funds have went up 400 basis points. Uh, Treasuries have went up, 10-year treasuries have went up 220 basis points. Just an average 30-year mortgage rate is up 310 basis points. We have these double digits inflations, which I don't think anyone has seen since the late 80s, early 90s. So we have this conjunction of events that create a huge amount of uncertainty, and no one has ever seen these conditions before. So how do you train people and get people ready for this? Well, you really can't. It's like NCUA going into every recession. We were always short staffed. And we'd hire a bunch of people and we'd train them and they'd get really smart and how to figure out all these problems. And then they'd get promoted and move on and we would reduce staffing and we'd repeat the cycle. Well, we're kind of in the same place. NCUA is in the same place again, but so are credit unions. No one on their management team or staff really has experience with these conditions. And there's still a huge amount of uncertainty. We'll talk about what credit unions can do at the end. But I think NCUA is facing a huge amount of uncertainty themselves and staffing. So they've shortened this priority letter up to some basics that are really important. Now, well said, well said. Steve, any thoughts relative to what Todd had to say before we jump into the priorities? Yeah, operating environment is, is a real issue of which you don't have a lot of control of. But how you choose to react to it and the thoughts and the processes you go through as you're looking at those decisions have to be made are going to be super critical look going forward. Yeah, well said, well said. And Todd, you referred to what fell off the list I, in previous podcasts and blogs and on LinkedIn. I've spoke to the fact that in 2022, there were 11 priorities, and that was at least four more than there had been in the previous four years. The previous four years, there were either six or seven. 
they jack that up to 11. And as I've said previously, when everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. And now here we are, and it, 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 there are definite priorities, right? The first three in particular, which, which as we've discussed offline, are, are kind of related. Um, but what felt, as a reminder, what fell off was payment systems, which was new last year. Capital adequacy, which was new last year and ironically hadn't been on the list in the last five years. Loan participations was also new. And then there were a couple that had occasionally been on that that snuck their way back onto the list, like loan loss reserving. So that's what left the list in 2022. And we're here with six and maybe seven if you count some of the other comments that are listed. But first up, in order, and, and as I always tried to look at anything that NCUA would issue publicly, if you're going to have six priorities, you should put them in order of priority, right? So what's the most important in the eyes of NCUA? And while they don't publicly say that, that's the reality uh, of how these documents are put together. And first up on the, on the radar for NCUA is interest rate risk. And Todd, you talked about a lot of statistics as it relates to interest rate risk. All right. With that, Todd, Steve, interest rate risk and credit unions and this priority letter. What What's your take on what NCUA says here, maybe what they don't say, and what credit unions should be looking for? Well, for years, NCUA has told people from their ALM model perspective to model an up 300 basis point shock. The general common thought is that was enough to trigger all the options. It's never really going to happen in real life, although it did happen in 94. And it definitely happened in 2023. Interest rates went up an actual 300 basis points. And the fallout of what we've seen from credit unions, and I don't think credit unions were prepared for it at all, is you've got a 10% drop in your investment valuation, both available for sale and held to maturity. Essentially, most of those investment portfolios are now illiquid. It's not really spoken of, but if your ALM model is functioning properly, well, you've seen a similar drop in the value of your loans as well. So they're not really available for sale without taking losses either. So in this case, we have an actual interest rates that have moved 300 basis points. It's created assets that are illiquid, both loans and investments. Are, you can't sell them without incurring a real significant loss to capital. On the other side of that, borrowings have shot up to $81 billion. They doubled during the course of just the first nine months of 2022. We haven't seen December's numbers yet. I'm sure they're going to shot, shoot up a bunch more. We've had this huge inflationary pressure, so the savings growth in the U.S. has just stopped. So these rising interest rates have created a host of issues for credit unions. Like I said, I think they caught credit unions be, by surprise. I listened to other ALM vendors. They caught all the bankers by surprise, too, so the credit unions are not alone in being caught by surprise. You see it in a number of ways. Interest rates went way up. Loan yields actually went down. People were really slow to adjust to those rising rates. Cost of funds stayed relatively stable. We'll talk about cost of fund implications maybe at the end of the podcast of what credit unions need to do. Um, but so everyone set risk tolerances. This is what we'll do in a 300 basis point shock. Well, now they're at those and we've got another 300 basis point shock in the model to come. And we have no idea where rates will go. The Fed says they're going to slow the rise of rates. We don't know where inflation is going to go. But with COVID and all these deposit surges, um, all your rate-sensitive money is just kind of all mixed together with everything else. I went back and looked historically before 2009, CDs and money markets were about 50% of a credit union's deposit base. They're down to like 34 now. And, and more likely, by the time we get through this next interest rate risk cycle, those money markets and CDs are probably going to be back up to 50% again. Right. Money is just all blended. When rates are low, people don't really care. As rates rise, they start caring. And once rates get in that 3.5%, 4%, people start paying attention as to what they're yielding. And then you add the inflation, which puts pressure on people's spending. They're looking to squeeze every drop of beet juice out of that deposit that they have on. So I think conditions are changing. Interest rate risk is going to be a big challenge. It has a huge impact on liquidity risk. 
as well. And like I said, right now, credit unions or investment and loan portfolios are underwater and they are a diminished source of liquidity from what they used to be. So I can see why this is on there first because we just have not had a precedent for this level of interest rate risk combined with inflation, um, creating a lot of uncertainty. And credit unions didn't really respond as quickly as they needed to. So um, it's interesting that NCUA had to change their supervisory test and get rid of the extreme risk because that was going to create more problems maybe than it would solve forcing credit unions to de-risk without going through a very thoughtful process of whether that was necessary or not. So that was a positive thing that the agency did during 2022 is eliminate that category and give credit unions a little bit more chance to be responsive in a way that makes sense for them as opposed to being dictated to that you must reduce interest rate risk in an arbitrary fashion. But there's more and more credit unions will probably see doors about coming up with plans to manage interest rate risk next year. Yeah, and we're seeing that with with some of our clients. And, and as you mentioned, you, they required, my recollection is the change they made is they got rid of extreme and they got rid of, when they got rid of extreme, they got rid of the need to require the examiner to do a document resolution. And we were hearing that, Staff didn't really want to do that. That was kind of a, an example, like you said, that was something good NCUA did where credit unions were speaking to their trades and other folks, and that was getting back to NCUA. And NCUA realized they had a problem in that, in how that was structured. And without going into a huge amount of detail on that, there is a, a, a separate podcast we did on that, and I'll put a link into the show notes that that that. Well, if someone's interested in listening to that again, they can. Steve, any, any thoughts you'd like to add on? On, on this first topic of interest rate risk, is this anything you you recall seeing in the in the in the thirty three years at NCUA? Everything that's going on, not with such a volatile environment. Usually, it was it was happening more in a vacuum. So, so Todd had talked to me earlier about the the importance of your ALM models because you just you can't ignore all the impacts that this is having, and you you. You certainly can see the impact that's happening on the investment pricing because it's on your financial statement and unrealized losses. But as Todd pointed out, increasing interest rates have affected the value of your your loans also. So that's a really interesting concept, too, because because you your portfolio, you, you can easily get that the value of what you can sell it at today. And because rates have gone up, those loans you booked generally speaking, are going to have less value, whether they're fixed or variable, depending on how that variable variable product works. Yet they don't have that as a number that they have to book on the financial statement. And it doesn't work into the gap gap equity ratio unless unless there's something I'm missing. So so you can have some credit unions that have a what appears to be a higher gap equity ratio, but may have just as many challenging interest rate risk issues and or liquidity issues. So that, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting takeaway. What, so one other thing too, um, so this is number one on the list and I have this chart that, that I put together and I'll, I'll kind of put it back on my, I'm going to update it with 2023, but last year, interest rate risk last year, they didn't even have it on there. They, they, it was just in 2021, it was liquidity risk only, liquidity risk only in 2020, 2019, they called it liquidity risk and interest rate risk. But every year for the last six years, it's been there kind of a, hey, keep your eyes on this. It might become an issue. So we'll throw it in here along with the kitchen sink. And boom, it went it went from from worst to first as far as what they're concerned about and with good with good reason. Okay, that's our take on interest rate risk. Tomorrow we will have liquidity risk, which is closely linked to interest rate risk. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll have more on interest rate risk as rates keep going up and as that creates more pressure on credit unions in pretty much every way. I think you'll find that NCUA is looking at this very closely on your exams. If you'd like some help with that, reach out. That's it. This is Mark Treichel signing off with Flying Colors. Thank you.
for joining us on this episode of With Flying Colors. Subscribe on your favorite podcast app to hear future episodes where subject matter experts of all varieties will provide tips on how to achieve success with NCUA. If you would like to learn more about how we assist credit unions, check out our services at marktrichel.com. 